I have an angelic glow. I actually had to look it up on Google. Well, yeah, they're dead. That is fascinating. Facebook, you stay alive. And which is a little bit stronger than toilet paper. Oh, oh, some curse words flew. And can you tell that one's not real? Facebook is being a snot. You can choose to do whatever you want. Smush a tomato. I love this picture. Don't cut. I'm such a goober. gonna have to like figure out a different place maybe the opposite side of my office because on Instagram I'm uh, I have an angelic glow is that what you call that <laughs> oh sorry I'm late you guys because um, technology was not in my favor this morning my iPad was completely dead good job Anna way to be prepared okay so like usual morning th there's happy Thursday Thursday mornings are nuts and I don't get to boil my nails till I sit down and talk to you guys so um, anyway okay I see some of you coming over on Instagram Facebook wake up wake up Facebook um, okay this is so funny. Oh, you guys are so nice. Today was a good hair day and I'm like, can I just start on time? I really want to start on time. And I'm like, iPad, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> and it wouldn't. I just kept sitting there going, oh my God, dang it. Anyway, rekindled nails L by Michelle. Hello. And she's really not Michelle. She's uh her middle name is Michelle, long story, and so she's actually Lynette, but then her, um, she was over on Pinterest and did things and ended up over here on Instagram and is rekindled nails by, I didn't even see the L, and so Michelle, good morning Lynette. <laughs> oh gosh, what a day, what a day. Yesterday was a cruddy day for me, so Today is much better. I slept until nine. Nine. I normally sleep about eight hours and I'm awake by 7.30 or eight. Eight. Anyway. Hi guys. Atilka. I love seeing some of Nails Olay's. Love my earrings. Thank you. Hi guys. Oh, you guys, it's so nice to see all of you familiar faces. Mrs. Dransky, good morning. Um, yeah, green gem. Wake up, Facebook! It's so funny. Um, yeah, still nobody's over there. It's quiet on Facebook. Quiet today. Um, Fabian, Fabian, good morning. You guys are so nice. Best alpaca. My mom, hello. My mom um, almost tried, she almost started an alpaca farm and then realized that that would be a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. Um, but she loves, loves alpaca wool, wool for knitting and stuff. And it's so funny because she keeps wanting to make me stuff, but I'm allergic. I don't, I don't do well with nail or uh, with uh, any type of wool, even mohair, nothing, nothing. If it's got wool in it, can't do it. Put it on her whole neck, just like, like she wants to make a scarf and. I've tried my whole neck gets all red and itchy and anyway there we go hi Rhea how are you honey way across the globe oh nails of lace you recovering from getting your wisdom teeth so <laughs> I will try to distract you oh gosh um oh Fabian says she when she was asleep, she rip, ripped off her polished thumbnail. What are you doing when you're asleep? Holy smokes. Isn't that weird? Like last night, not last night, but the night before. Um, yeah, I had horrible, horrible dreams. I won't even share them with you. But um, 
it's not a good way to wake up. Traveling life stars. Natalie, oh, there's that video over on Facebook. Oh, I see a few people. Natalie, hello from Nova Scotia. Um, best alpaca, she says, I love alpacas. Surprise! <laughs> oh gosh, and she knits. Good, Kanusha, hello. Um, traveling life. Uh, no, this necklace. I just love the necklace. Did I make it? No, but I, what was weird, this is a funny story too. I gave this necklace, I found it at Kohl's here in the United States, and I gave the necklace to, for her birthday, to one of my friends at church, and um, I was like, man, I should have bought another one. And literally, like, three years later, went back and it was there again. I was like, oh, is, you know, one of those happy days where you're like, oh my God, I found the thing. So anyway, um, so Fabian, get some oil on that, honey. Use, use acetone, get that polish off that she partially ripped while she was asleep. Um, oh, Rhea's getting a new puppy. Next one, I decided about that. Oh, this is a fun story for, oh, this week has been crazy. Um, so Bradley, my youngest, Mr. B, has been bugging me for a cat forever. And we have an inside cat. And when we bought the property, we inherited two outside tuxedo cats who are great mousers. And um, I was like, you know, we need some more mousers. But um, so Bradley kept wanting another inside cat. And I'm like, no, we just can't do it because I've had three cats that were aging and you never know who's peeing on the carpet and maybe has a bladder infection or a kidney problem and all, it's no. Having several old cats is messy. So it was like, we're gonna have one cat inside and he wanted another one and I was like, Argh. anyway. So I was like, oh, we could get some outside cats and one of them could be for him. So we've got one cat in the garage who is hiding behind the refrigerator because she came two days ago. And then another cat, she's black and white and came yesterday evening and she is um gonna be in my office for three weeks until she gets acclimated and um she's so i've got my office here and then in that black hole back over there there's bookcases so you step down and she is hidden in the back behind boxes and into the bookcase as far as she can get so hopefully she'll warm up in about a week um but so he has named her, since the other one came with a name named Lucci, uh, he has named her Minerva McGonagall. And so she'll be Minnie for short. I thought, oh, that is a great name. Um, so uh, anyway, hello to all of you who have come over on Instagram. And Beth, she says, I'm usually watching on Instagram, but she's on Facebook. Well, you have to tell me how it goes on Facebook. Um, I don't seem to have that halo light glow from the skylights um, over on Facebook like I do on uh, Instagram. Uh, so, am I okay? No, she's talking probably somebody else. Um, yay for Bradley. Okay, I am not seeing any questions yet. But, I wanted to revisit what I talked about last week, which actually Lynette asked. Um, which was is breathable polish a good thing and um so i was like i knew it was developed for the muslim community uh, for muslim women who pray uh, and let's see if i can say this right so certain things have to be halal like um like for jewish people it has to be kosher um so that goes those go rules go with a lot of foods and things and uh and then um, their prayers, doing five prayers a day, is uh, Salat. I actually had to look it up on Google and how to pronounce it. And I love that there's videos over on YouTube, 15 second videos of how to pronounce these words. So uh, anyway, so back to the breathable nail polish. Okay, so for this community, the Muslim community, they 
um, if they are practicing the prayers, they go to prayers five times a day and n their entire body needs to be able to be touched by water. So obviously artificial nail enhancements in any way, shape or form like polish or gel or acrylic is forbidden um, because they don't have water that comes through. So uh, the big polish companies got smart um, because you're always looking as a business owner, you're always looking either to sell more products or increase the amount of people that you sell to. So they wanted to offer the breathable, breathable polish to that community. Um, which was shocking because I found out that Muslims make up 11% of the global population. That's a lot of people. And so it made sense that these companies want to make it so that there is a water penetrating, a, the, a polish that water is able to penetrate through. Okay, so why they call it breathable polish. Now that goes back to the myth that nails need to breathe, but nails are technically dead. So not tech, well, yeah, they're dead. So um, technically we don't need breathable nail polish, but that goes with that myth of nails. You should take a polish break because nails need to breathe and bleh. no, they don't. Um, they've got lung, but they do not have lungs. Let me say that right. Um, and so your nails don't need to breathe. What your nails need actually is body oil. And so uh, the nail bed, what the pink nail bed right there, what it does is it pushes up the right blend of body oil, a lot of it being sebum, um, which is a wax ester, and then also moisture. And what that does is it keeps the nail here transparent. That's why you can see pink. Um, and so then once the nail leaves the nail bed, then it starts to dry out and that's why it turns white or yellowish tinted and really yellow if we like to put polish on. Cause that does like the darker pigments do settle into like the top couple of layers of your nail polish and it sort of turns it yellow over time. Okay, so back to the breathable nail polish, which technically should be called uh, water permeating, permeable polish so that water can go through. And I actually saw a video, there's probably several videos, but I found one where she did this test to see if putting water and rubbing it on the polish for 10 seconds, and so she did a test on paper, she put the polish on the paper, and then rubbed for 10 seconds and the paper got wet. And I was like, that is fascinating. So um, for the Muslim community, I appreciate the companies who are making pretty nail polish available that is acceptable for their religion and their prayer practice. Um, but yeah, so do we need them? No, we don't. And actually we don't really want them because we don't want water penetrating into our nail plate and drying it out. So anyway, there's long story of the breathable nail polish and why we don't need it, but the Muslim community does. So grateful for that. And that I will be able to edit better and it will sound more coherent um, when I put this up on YouTube. So, okay. Has anybody asked some questions? Oh, I want to know why Amber is sad. Um, that was the okay. Um, let's see. I'm always glowing. Oh, thank you. I'm especially glowing with a weird two skylights up there, which makes it very hot on hot days. I've got three sliding glass windows and two skylights, so it's beautifully lit, but it's facing the south, and so when it gets hot, this room gets hot. Oh, hello, Cecile, over from, ne she's in Nice today. Um, oh, you guys are so, my crush loves your nail art. 
Not sure what that means, but thank you. Um, oh, Cecile says, question about IBX. If I'm the type whose nail layers aren't close enough and that's why they peel, wouldn't IBX be a waste of time? Cecile, I want to hook you up with Rhea Gomez. I think it's Rhea Gomez. She's on here. Um, I want to connect you with Rhea because she's a nail professional who is certified with IBX and she will be able to tell you and IBX is a product that not last year but the year before Doug Shoon author of nail structure and product chemistry voted that as his most new innovative product so that's kind of cool what's interesting is that IBX uh, I don't remember their their company name um, but they they are run by a scientist who he used to Doug used to work with at C and D they worked together creative nail designs so now a lot of you probably have their polish um, and so Doug now you know he's moved on and he's doing his thing and this other gentleman is now running this company um, and so IVX is I've heard great things it is very pricey so but if you find a good person who does it, so Cecile, hook up with Rhea. Um, start following her and pick her brain. Direct message. And Rhea, I hope that's okay. I am connecting you to people. Um, okay. Because, uh, Cecile, I honestly don't know. I have not done anything with IVX, so there we go. Um, okay. Uh, so Lynette asks, Facebook, you stay alive. It's flashing. It's doing weird things. Um, should you fix a nail when it's broken? That is up to you. Um, for the longest time, this is another funny story. I have funny stories. Uh, back when I was a teenager in 19... Seven, late 70s, early 80, 80s. Um, I repaired my nails when they tore. I repaired them with super glue and I took double ply toilet paper and I used only one part. And so, hence now people are smart and they use tea bags instead, which is a little bit stronger than toilet paper. Um, and so anyway, and then I just polished over that and that's how I was. And then you have to keep doing the repair because acetone dissolves the super glue. Um, so if you ever get super glue on your skin, now you know how to take it off. Um, and so then as I got back into the nail community and started learning all kinds of things, then I learned about the tea bag trick. And so I did that for a while, but again, the same thing. Acetone dissolves the nail glue. And so then I started doing a partial silk or a fiberglass wrap. And fiberglass is stronger than a tea bag. But again, still back to the glue. So like I was repairing it every week. And then I had a huge break very very bad break and I wrote an article about it over on nailcarehq.com and I broke this nail back here and it was bloody and it was puffy and it hurt like the and um so but because my nail bed was so exposed and it hurt so badly I couldn't even put a band-aid on it so I went and got a plastic nail not just a tip, but a plastic nail that you glue on. And I glued it to this part of the nail, but of course the, the nail glue bonded to my skin. And oh, 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 some cursed words flew. It hurt so badly, but by the time the glue had cured, dried, um, within 10 minutes, the pain was very minimal and I, so that's what I did and I it came it lasted a couple of weeks and then the glue kind of failed and it popped off but 
So I was just able to re-glue it on and it saved me so much agony, saved me from that. So I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, I think that's how I will repair all of my brakes now uh, because I was the only one who could tell the difference that it was not my nail. And you know, I'd filed it and shaped it so it looked just like my other nails. And I kept sticking my nails in front of people and Corey and my daughter and I was like, what do you see? And they're like, I see your nails. Why are you showing me your nails? And I'm like, can you tell that one's not real? And uh, they're like, no. So, yay. Facebook is being a snot. Uh, <laughs> I keep saying, it's trying to reconnect. So, I'm sorry those of you who are over on Facebook. Broadcast failed. Something went wrong. Okay, well, Facebook, I'm sorry. Come back over to Instagram. Oh, look at that. It started, it, it wants me to post. Okay, I'll post that much. <laughs> wow, today is just weird. Um, so, there you go, Lynette. Uh, let's see. Painted puppy, how cute. Hello, Maria. Um, oh, Masoshinja, so cute. I'm just gonna call you cute. Uh, any news on the availability of those foot glove thingies that I posted the other day? So here's the thing, and I always, always test, 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 test all the things. And because I try and remember to test like every way that y'all can mess things up. And I want to make sure that any product that we carry is gonna last and is gonna be of value to you. So these are the gloves that I've chosen and they're 30% thicker than normal nitrile gloves. And even though I'm supposed to say they're a one-time use, you can choose to do whatever you want. Um, and somebody's used them 15 times before they finally broke. Anyway, so I posted a picture of, I found a company that makes foot gloves, but because they have a small niche and it's probably very expensive to make them, they are very expensive to buy them. Um, and you do need to buy in bulk. Uh, they don't sell retail. Can't find them on Amazon, can't find them anywhere. So I was like, you know, okay, first you have to send them to me so I can try them. And so they sent me one pair that is supposed to be one size fits all. Well, no, I have size 10 feet. So no, they're not one size fits all uh, because my toes started to get a little tingly. And I'm like, well, okay, those are a little snug. So they're supposed to have a large. They have one size fits all and large. So I'm like, well, I'm gonna have to try the large and be able to tell you guys, okay, one size fits all goes up to a size, probably a size eight, maybe a nine in women's. Um, they say that the large is supposed to work for men, but it's a men's nine, which is in a women's 11. Um, so I'm like, well, this will be interesting to see. And um, they are much thicker. They're very much thicker. In fact, they're thicker than these. Um, so that's pretty darn cool. And that's so you can do a hydration treatment um, on your feet. And during the summer, sorry, hair's like tickling me. Um, and during the summer, you know, we're wearing flip-flops and our heels dry out and, um, oh, that's another thing. I I'm going to leave for a second. Hold, please. All right. I wanted to ask you guys. So I got these samples and my best friend, she freaked out. She was like, what are these? So these are foot files that the company that makes our files, look, they've got our logo. I love that. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, anyway, um, should we carry these? Let me know. Um, I have no idea how much they'd cost, but oh, they have, they have a rougher side and they have a smooth side. Ooh, that's cool. Okay, well anyway, but here's the thing. If you drop them in the shower with a tile, they're probably going to break. So that's where, that's my only thing. Cause you know, you can go get a 
pumice stone or a, one of these other types of things to, you know, get the file your heels, buff your heels, whatever we do, um, to get that calloused skin off and so it's easier to moisturize them. Um, and you know, it's a big deal during the summer because we do get those calluses because the body's like, you know what? You're messing with my feet. You're messing with my skin, so I'm gonna make more skin. And that's how calluses show up. And then because we're walking on them, at our feet, and we're putting this squishing pressure, then they start to crack. So like if you were to smush a tomato, okay, that's kind of, your skin kind of gets like that. And if you squished a tomato, what's it gonna do? It's gonna start cracking and anyway. So that's why our heels crack. Uh, so um, back to the, the footies, I don't know yet. I have to try them. I have to make sure that they're gonna work. Um, we're not supposed to walk around in them, so you're supposed to give yourself a spa thing. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll try and keep you guys up to date. Oh, Miss Deb, love you, Anna. Love you back, Miss Deb. Um, okay, nails a lace. I have a small question. One of my nails has a fracture on the corner from the edge to the tip. It isn't torn, but it likes to bend at the weakest point and create a crack in my polish. Can you save it? So that's called what I call a stress fracture. It's what Doug calls a fissure. And, um, and that's just when you've bent your nail too much. Um, you know, you whacked it into something, a, a door, a handle, or here's the worst, trying to put the sheets on your bed. That will bend fingernails like nobody's business. So I try and pawn that one off on Corey. He's very, very kind. Um, so when you get that stress fracture, and I have an article about it over on Nail Care HQ. Um, there's really nothing you can do about that. You can't really glue the layers back together. Um, they've sort of been pulled apart and they don't want to go back together. Uh, so you can rip, do that, a tea, tea bag repair. You could also glue on, um, you could just cut it shorter, get rid of the, the stress fracture. Um, and then if all of your other nails are longer and you want to keep that look and you don't want to cut them all shorter, then I would do the plastic uh, nail tip uh, to cover that up. So, and also you guys, well, normally my nails and my thumbnails are much shorter because they're wider, they're flatter, they tear way, 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 way back there. Um, so I tend to keep them shorter so that if they bump into things or, or there's upward pressure of anything. So if anything, ugh, that's not working. If anything pushes up, it's going to create a problem. And so that's what happens with a lot of people is it's really the upward pressure of when we're doing things that kind of help make tears because your body is and your nails are actually because of the way the cells are lined up um surprisingly which you would not guess if there was a grain so this is what doug said to me if there was a grain to because you know like there's grain to wood and there's kind of a grain to um meat when you're slicing it you want to slice against the grain um so if there was a grain for nails it's this way sideways and the reason for that is mother nature knows that when we're doing things and if there's any stresses stresses against the nail that's pushing up the nail is going to tear across this way so that you still have fingernails so you still can grab and scratch and do all of the things that we do with our hands so that's um there you go long-winded answer hope you got it um, yeah, you could, you could kind of save it or you could just go, forget it. It depends on, you know, saving with the tea bag and the fiberglass wrap, but 
saving is and then you've still got to be really careful to not bend it again because since it already has that bend there it's gonna want to bend again so anyway um okay so Rhea's chimed in oh she's Rhea Gomez com so and she's got a I'm sure she's Rhea Gomez dot com too um I'd be X repair is applied before strengthener and it's supposed to fill in those caps gaps uh, between the layers so um, I don't know what it is but it is able to penetrate those top surface layers it's not gonna penetrate through all of it but helps to kind of bond those layers back together so that then you you have nails <laughs> they're not all fuzzy and things um, uh, oh, Painted Puppy says, just want you to know what beautiful horses you have. So sweet. Yes. I love my Zeus. Um, okay. Wow. I'm way behind. Uh, yeah, I know Starcat. I'm sorry. Facebook is just being a brat. I don't like it when technology is a brat. Stop that. Um, okay, so much, so many nice people. I wish I could say all of your names. Amara, Jalessia. Um, sometimes when I wear makeup, it makes my eyes go woo. Uh, okay, so hello to all of you. Brazil, I love that you guys are from everywhere. Um, oh, foot files yes okay we're liking the idea all right i'm gonna have to find out how much they are because i have a feeling there are a lot of glass so i have a feeling they're gonna be pretty pricey any tips about what i asked about earlier with raised cuticles i'd love your advice and help okay so what she's really talking about is the proximal fold uh, let's see if I can find some pictures without having everything <clears throat> explode. All right. So what she's talking about, let me see if I can get this up here. So this is the proximal fold and take a look at that. What ha what's happening here? So here's your cuticle. I love this picture. I love it. So this is your cuticle, dead skin on the nail plate. And it is coming out from underneath the matrix and it is very, very, very bonded to the nail plate. And so the proximal fold, it's also connected to the proximal fold. And so nature naturally over time lets that release. But sometimes it doesn't and there's areas that sometimes it doesn't. And so the proximal fold gets stretched out and pulled out and eventually releases and so then what's happened is this proximal fold right here has you've got a lot more skin and so that's why that can look a whole lot thicker and you can actually run a tool like an orange wood stick or something just under it a little bit so that's what's happening and the best thing you can do which is because people ask me should I push my cuticles back well yes and here's why you're really pushing back the proximal fold to release it from the cuticle. So you want to release it about every five days, especially if this is a tendency for your body. You want to just sort of use your fingernail and separate these two. So that's what you're really doing is you're separating. You're not pushing back, but it kind of happens. Um, you're separating that so that then when you oil you can keep this skin nice and tight because here's what happens at the salon they get um, people that have proximal folds that are really still connected and all um, so then when they do release it then you've got this huge hunk of skin guess what they want to do cut it so that's how cutting started I'm cutting your proximal fold and you know what uh, it's surprising how many nail techs I don't consider them a nail professional unless they know all of the parts of the finger um, 
because they should know the cuticle and the proximal fold and the epinicium and the hyponicium and the lateral folds and there's an ichium for that, that name too. Um, so yeah, they should know about that. Um, anyway, so then they're just a nail tech to me unless they know all of that stuff and they know they're really, really good at removing product properly. Um, they don't take an e-file to your nail, an electronic file. There's all kinds of things. Um, so anyway, that's why they won't want to cut it. And then what you're doing is you're cutting live skin. And so then now, because we'll go back to this picture, now because you've cut a bunch of this skin off, this is part of a guardian seal that keeps germs and bacteria from going in and destroying your matrix. Don't cut. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, okay. Y'all are talking, and I love it. Anna, you don't seem to be your usual happy, chirpy self. Why? I'm not. I feel like I am. Okay. And I had two cups of coffee. I don't know. I don't know. The hair worked today. The makeup worked today. I was like, wow, this is really good. Okay, probably I'm a little bit grumpy because Facebook, my iPad was completely dead this morning. That's why I was 15 minutes late. Like, wake up, wake up, wake up. Um, and then it's being weird. I only got like 13 minutes. So I guess that could make me grumpy. Anyway, I'm trying to be chirpy. I'll, I'll chirp some more. Chip, chip, chip. Uh, I could be funny about that and go on. Um, Nails of Lace, thanks for the informative answer. Do you have gel polish right on now? Uh -huh. And what kind of gluing things together for now? But I'll probably chop them off and start fresh when I redo my nail. Your Manny, sorry. Um, so she's the one that talked about saving the stress fracture. Um, I do not have gel polish on right now. All I have is two layers of base coat. But my nails are really, really thin and I prefer to um, have five layers of polish. That's why I created the Fab Five Polish Wrap, which all of the instructions are over on Nail Care HQ. Um, I'm probably, it's probably over on my Bliss Kiss in the blogging area too. Um, so it's two layers of base coat two layers of color and another layer of top coat. But the base coat and the top coat, you wrap all the way around your fingertips so that what that does is it protects your nails, these nail tips that dry out so easily with water and soap, um, it protects them from water absorption. And then when you think about it, you've got five layers on top, you've got three layers on the bottom, and so your tips are protected with eight layers of polish. That's a good thing. Um, so, and, and you, you also make a really good point of sometimes it's okay to cut them down and just start over. Um, a lot of times I'll get peeling and tip wear and on my tips and it's just like, eh, just cut them shorter. Just cut the damaged part off. And um, the bloggers, the, the people in the nail community and I share, I think it's Nails by Megan, I share her often. She has super, super short nails and she has a very short nail bed also. And so her, you can actually see her fingertip even though she's perfectly manicured her nails and she does great nail art on really short nails, which is why I feature her a lot. Um, and so these gals have taught me that as long as you manicure, you know, you take care of your nails and you do a nice manicure and you clean up with, if you make a big mess, you clean up with acetone and a, a cheap makeup brush um, around your proximal fold. Um, if you do that, then you have this beautiful salon manicure, even on short nails, and it looks lovely. You look put together, yeah. And you know, people notice hands first. When we meet other people, we shake their hand. And I can't tell you, well, of course it's my job, but 
I look at everybody's hands first and I can tell how well they take care of themselves by what their hands look like. Doesn't matter if they're wearing makeup, doesn't matter if their hair's pretty or sloppy, um, how well you take care of your hands. I don't even worry about people's feet as much, but how you take care of your hands is a presentation of, to me, all of you. <clears throat> so enjoy your manicures. Uh, so Natasha says, my nails started to peel very badly. I noticed after an overnight hydration treatment, it started to get very hot here in California. Do you think it's because my hands are sweating? Yeah, yeah, it could be. Um, especially maybe if you're not, if maybe you might not want not, bleh, bleh, eh, uh, you might not want to do an overnight hydration treatment. Um, you might just want to do short one while you're watching TV or doing dishes or something like that. Um, and again, a lot of peeling happens because we have tip wear. Our nail tips are touching everything. The only people who don't seem to have that problem is when their nails are really short because they're actually touching things with their fingertips. And like Corey can touch his touch to touch he can touch the his phone and his iPad and all of those things he can touch them with the tops of his fingers and I can't do that so I end up when I'm using my phone and stuff I use this part of my finger and so I end up what I call fat fingering everything and I misspell all kinds of things because I can't use the tip of my finger and actually when I cut my nails real short those are the, the tips of my fingers are pretty sensitive for a couple of days. Um, so that's why. Um, did I really answer your question? Um, if they're peeling badly, um, if the peel is sticking up, you can uh, lightly trim that and lightly buff it. Try not to hit the rest of your nail and then fill that in with nail glue and then polish over those. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's see. Danny says something, and I'm not sure what you mean by all of that, but okay. Um, raised nails. I don't really have any cuticles, only on one nail, so I regularly have to remove the bonded dead skin. Raze, will you send me a picture of your nails? I can help you. Make sure when you guys send me pictures, make sure you take the picture with your phone or your camera. But if you're doing it with your phone, make sure you take pictures to your phone first and then upload them in a DM to me. If you take them from the little take a picture feature in Instagram, I only get to see it for 15 seconds and then it's gone. It's kind of like Snapchat. And um, that doesn't help me because I like to zoom in on things so that I can see what the heck y'all are talking about. <clears throat> um, so yeah. Um, hopefully, Lynette, I answered your question. Um, Rhea, so Rhea is a nail professional. Never cut and never let anyone do a dry manicure or a Russian manicure on you. So actually I wanted to talk about Russian manicures and I get why they're, they're, they're started, they're just really popular in Russia. Um, and they're starting, it's coming over to the United States and it's probably going to a lot of other countries. Um, but what they're doing is they're using electronic bits to, um, and they're very, very fine. So they're very much like, the very very smooth fine and in fact they're probably even finer than this I don't I wouldn't know their number their grit type of number um, but they're super 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 fine and what they do is they use this electronic bit to get rid of the cuticle this part get rid of the dead skin and then what they're doing is they're buffing your proximal fold okay well you know, when I talk to people about, and they've got big calluses here that oiling doesn't seem to soften them enough, then I'm like, okay, take, not a foot file, but take your 
your your glass file. You want a really, 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 really fine file. Um, and you can rub a little bit of that callus to smooth it out. So then when the oil penetrates into that more, then that skin softens. Okay, Russian manicures are kind of like that because it's not hugely bad to take a really fine file and kind of buff that callus a little bit. You don't want to remove it because if you remove it, if you cut that callus or you file it down like crazy, um, you are you're telling your body, damaging that area, so let's make more skin. All right, so this is the problem with the Russian manicure is because since they're buffing away all of that proximal fold because they believe that should be gone, um, they're creating, they're telling the body, make more skin. So then it becomes a vicious cycle because your proximal fold gets thicker and thicker and then it's more that has to be filed down. And my biggest problem with, besides the fact that Doug wrote a huge article, um, well, it's not huge. I've written bigger articles, but he wrote a really good article that's over on Nail Care HQ. So just Google that and Russian manicure. Um, and he explains why they're dangerous. And the, for me, the biggest problem is a, a nail tech cannot feel your pain. So if in all of this buffing that they're doing, and this happens a lot when people get acrylic um, because they're sanding and filing down that top surface, they'll hit your skin. And then you end up with a nick in the skin that can get infected. And so that's the biggest problem that I see with Russian manicures is that they cannot feel your pain. And so they will, they, it's very easy for them to overdo it. And the biggest problem is that they're teaching online and no, 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 they should not be teaching it online. So thank you, Rhea, for that. Um, do I recommend the cuticle gel remover stuff? And yes, I do. Um, I prefer the, I'm looking for the one, I'm looking for the one um, that we're gonna carry. It's, it's almost done, it's almost there. Um, so, I have used for a long time the Sally Hansen that comes in a blue bottle. Do I have you here? Yes, I do. The Sally Hansen one. And the reason I liked this one um, is because it's a gel. I'm like turning it upside down and watching the gel move. <laughs> I'm such a goober. Anyway, um, I like this one because it's a gel. So you are able to put it right on your nail plate. But here's the problem is gel is anything that touches your live skin, if it's going to eat the ingredients that eat the dead skin, also eat the live skin. And that's why we came up with, I came up with Simply Peel. Not for nail art. It's really cool. It works great. But I actually came up with it to prevent all of that lye, the skin eating stuff, from eating your live skin. So that's why. So you put Simply Peel on first, then you put the cuticle remover on, you let it sit for a minute, and because the instructions on this say do not let it touch your skin. But whenever I see videos, I see people just slather it all over and then you end up with these teeny teeny little shredding hangnails. Mm, that's, how, <laughs> that's how they come about. Um, okay. Uh, so yes, I do. And the reason that um, we've started carry, we're gonna carry one is because it's even thicker. It's like the consistency of thick, thick hair conditioner. Um, and so it really sits there and sits on your nail plate and does not flood into your lateral fold or the, even the proximal fold, but you still wanna protect your skin with Simply Peel, so. Um, Cecile says I miss the wind chimes. Um, yeah, they're not they're not talking today because it's not windy. Um, uh, wonderful Oracle, was that your horses on the video? Yes, I did a live of what my morning looks like when I go out and do the horses. Um, 
So yes, the black one, he's a Frisian. That is my Zeus. Um, and then the other one, the gypsy, he's, he's a bay, nice brownish chocolate color. Um, he is my mother's horse. Uh, but he's for sale right now because I think he's just going to be too powerful for my mom. Um, cause gypsies are strong. Gypsy Vanner. Um, <laughs> you guys are talking to Corey. Uh, so if you guys want to see Zeus and all of the other critters that are happening on this property and the flowers and lots and lots of flowers, I love planting flowers, um, follow me at real, R-E-A-L, Anna, A-N-A, Seidel, S is in Sam, E-I-D-E-L, um, real Anna Seidel, follow me over there and get to see the more personal side. Um... Let's see. What causes do we do we do 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 we <laughs> GW giggles? Uh, what causes nails to have ridges and how do I smooth them out? Don't, don't smooth them out. Um, so let's see if I can find a picture with ridges. I know I got one. I know I got one. Um, so ridges are, if you think about it, the thickest part of our nail plate. <clears throat> So this is a good one. This is an older, probably gentleman, maybe. Could be a woman. But, so these are the ridges that she's talking about. She or he. I can't tell by some of your names. Um, anyway, and what is happening is, as we age, um, these the grooves in between the ridges, these small sections in your nail matrix are not working at 100% capacity. And so you, it's producing thinner nail cells in that area. So I like the analogy of dirt. Um, if you are in a valley, you have less dirt, but if you're going up a mountain, you have more dirt. So that's the cells, okay, you've got more. And um, so we don't want to get rid of the, the ridges. What we really want to do is fill the grooves. So it really should be called groove filling, base coat instead of ridge filling base coat because you're technically not filling the ridges. <laughs> um, but that's what you want to do. You find a good ridge filling base coat and what it does is it has all these little micro particles that settle into the groove so that then it smooths out the surface and then you can have a lovely smooth manicure. Um, so and I did an article over on Nail Care HQ about, I tested six, six different base coats and the winner was Wet n Wild. So, um, can you tell me, so Kumo, can you tell me why I have a lot of hangnails and they hurt me? Um, you're not giving me enough information, but a lot of hangnails tend to happen when you do a lot of things with your hands or the one big thing is the cuticle remover. If that gets on your skin, that's going to cause hangnails. Um, but I've also noticed that like I'll get some if I'm doing things that push against the proximal fold and, um, and sometimes it's just because our skin gets dry. So if you're moisturizing them with a good um, jojoba wax ester based nail oil like ours, um, then that will soften your skin and make it so that it doesn't want to shred. Um, but in terms of why we get them for other reasons, I don't know, but I've noticed that it's what you do with your hands. If you're shoving them into things a lot, like my son, he gets, Mr. Bradley, he gets a bunch of hangnails, but he also chews on his skin and his nails, so. Anyway, I would kind of have to ask you a bunch of questions. <laughs> Cecile says, blimey, that's some nail file. Yes, it is. Um, oh, really, Rhea? She says, I think it was Doug Shoon who has some very close up photo photos of proximal fold, of the proximal fold after a dry or Russian manicure, and it clearly causes damage to the proximal fold. 
Ooh, Rhea, will you tell me where you saw that? Because I want to go get it. Um, because Doug lets me borrow his pictures. Uh, will the raised skin ever blend into the cuticles again? Depends. Depends. Depends on a lot of things. You have oil coming, I think. Um, so that will help you a lot. Uh, printed nails. How are you today? I am great. Um... Yeah, you guys, the cuticle remover I'm starting to see now because <laughs> I'm always way behind you guys. Yeah, the cuticle remover is, I'm super, super excited about this. Um, let's see. You guys are talking so nice. I love it. Um, Atulka, do I, I was wondering, do I remove delaminating layers or do I just polish over them? Um, I talked about that a little bit before, so she's talking about peeling layers, and if they're peeling back um, and they you've got one that lifts, um, then it's okay to like clip that with little tiny clippers and then smooth that really, really, really carefully to try and not hit the rest of your nail plate, but just buff that down, that little spot, and then fill it with nail glue um, to kind of smooth it out, and then, yes! Polish over it, polish over it, and make sure you're wrapping your base coat and your top coat around your tips if you can. If your nails are short, at least cap your tips. So here's the difference. Capping your tips is just running the brush along the side, which a lot of people do. And that does help with tip wear. Not very, for very long, but it does help. Um, and then, but it's wrapping your tips, which is the thing I, I know some people did it, but I'm the one who kind of came up with the name and have been really pushing it. Um, so, uh, let's see. Uh, business, you want my business email? If you go to myblisskiss.com, you can find that there. Um, you guys are so nice. You're answering all the questions. Yeah. <laughs> Lynette says, does Bradley use my oil? No, but you know what? It took my husband an entire year to start using our oil. Thanks, Corey. Anyway, um, but he's busy and uh, and his nails and his skin definitely get better when he's using it regularly. Um, but even, you know, I mean, you guys think, oh, I, I'm perfect. No, I'm not. There are times where I haven't oiled my skin for days and the calluses get hard and it's, they're dry and they feel prickly. Um, so, you know, I'm like you guys. I, life gets busy. I do other things. But um, try and remember. Try and remember at least when you get up. And at least when you right before you go to bed, and if you, you put our um, our lotion stick on top of that, you wake up and your hands feel fantastic. Um, let's see. Thank you, Ria. I would appreciate that. Um, best alpaca. Would you still recommend the five layer method if I'm using a peel off base coat? Okay, so here's why, why are you using a peel off base coat? If you want to be able to peel it off within 24 hours, it, then doing the, the wrap isn't, it, it's so that you can get a long term manicure. Oh my gosh, I only have a minute. And... Um, so let's see. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, direct message me, I can finish that question, but uh, most likely not. If you're removing your polish really quickly, doing the Fab Five wrap isn't gonna, isn't gonna gain you anything. It's if you wanna have your manicure last for three, five, 10 days, then it's really, really important. Um, of course I'm gonna rat you out, Corey. Um, okay. Uh, 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 I know I'm not getting to all of your questions. Natasha, you just saw the big nail file. I asked everybody if they want me to sell it. Um, oh, oh, look, I got to the end. So cool. 
All right, one minute remaining. Where can you find all the things? Uh, all my articles over on nailcarehq.com. Um, the prod our products over on myblisskiss.com, and you can contact our customer care with any questions. Uh, James is awesome. I just adore James. Uh, and then you can uh, find a boat ton of uh, videos over on youtube.com forward slash bliss kiss. Um, so I think that's everything. Also, we have some support groups over on Facebook for people with skin issues and also people who bite their nails and pick at their skin or combinations thereof. I am a perfectionist skin picker. Um, so anyway, uh, I got a few seconds left, but Instagram cuts me off at weird times. I'm going to see you next week. Bye.